demon <laughs> is a man who scares the living shit out of me. Like, no, really, we're gonna get real for a second. Can we get real for a second? We've gotten real a little when I said I was bad at sex. That was slightly real. We're gonna get really real. You thought you know you don't have no idea. This is the true life of British fears. We're getting real. Oh, only I watched MTV in 2002. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Of any sort. The thing is, I don't, I say I don't believe in ghosts because I don't want to be scared shitless all of the time. That creepy feeling goes in the back of your neck, I just go, that's the win. Otherwise, I would shit my pants every day. I'm an atheist just so I'm not scared of ghosts. So no, I don't like magic. And the next comic really likes magic and he just scares me. He's on here because he intimidates me. The most intimidating man you'll see all night. as well as a Vietnamese to English interpreter. My father is a pharmacist. My uncle works for NASA in jet propulsion and lasers. My grandmother worked for the American Embassy interrogating captured Viet Cong terrorists. My grandfather was in the uh, Vietnamese military south, in case anyone's keeping track, so don't hate me. Um, <laughs> my brother just graduated from UCSD for engineering. He just got an internship at Goodrich Aerostructures. And I'm a comedian. <laughs> I'm a magician and a comedian. That's so much better. My parents are so proud of me. Um, I, have, I have a feeling that there's a question in your minds right now. You're all asking the same question in your mind, and so I'm just going to come on out and answer it so that everyone can get it out of mind and can move on to the comedy. The answer is yes, I really am Vietnamese. So, now that we're all done with that, we can move on to something else. Here's what we're doing. This is, I'm just glad that there's so many red lights up here so you can't see my Asian glow right now. Right? I had, a, I had a quandary earlier because um, the Asian in me is very bad with alcohol, but the Scotsman in me wanted the free alcohol that they were offering in the drink tickets. So it's like, ah! This is like, it's almost like, you know, offering a Jewish person free ham. You're like, what do you do? I'm not sure. I'm also Scottish. <laughs> yes, I'm Scottish. Um, I'm Asian and I'm Scottish. I grew up in Glasgow, so if you don't laugh at my jokes, I'll stab you in the face. So, not a joke, by the way. Have you ever heard of a Glasgow grin? You guys know what a Glasgow grin is? Uh, this is an actual thing. There's actually some. Uh, there's a Scottish actor in Hollywood. He's, he was in uh, Smoking Aces, and he had these scars on his face. That's a Glasgow grin. They get you. They take a knife. They cut your mouth open. That's a Glasgow grin. So laugh at my joke, or else that'll happen out in the um, parking lot. Even the chin whiskers. I'm not afraid of him. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not. Because chin whiskers, you punch me. All I have to tell the police is that you said fucking chink before he punched me, and I'm good. <laughs> Seriously, self-defense. Who needs, you know, all that, you know, oh, ah, oh, I just pulled something just doing that. I'm not built for this. Um, Tim, am I getting fat? I feel like I'm getting fat, Tim. In, in Scotland, and a lot of people say, are you Irish? And I have to, you know, just come out and set the record straight. This is what a Scottish person sounds like. If I were Irish, I'd sound like this. Tee 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 potato. So, <laughs> not my joke, that's Danny Boy. Scottish uh, entertainer and Danny Boy, that's his joke. So, um, <laughs> I have a, I always feel really uh, insecure about my voice, like really insecure, like it's not quite cool enough. Because when, when ladies think of really sexy accents, they think of like English or they think of Australian. They think of like, oh, you know, Sheila. Yeah, you're doing nice. You're doing well. Excellent. Well, they think of like like the, the Jason.
Jason Statham came up. I don't know. You all right? I want to go back to my my flat. Shag once, twice, maybe. Never call you again. Sound good? All right, let's do it. Or they always go for the exotic kind of sounding, like the Antonio Banderas. The hey, look, tell me if this does anything for you, by the way. Okay. Hello, my name is Nathan Fan. I do not get laid often, but when I do, it's because they drank way too much those seconds. No, 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 no. A little bit, just a little bit, okay. I've got, I've got that really awkward in-between voice, because you've got the, there are those voices that are just fantastic, they just melt you in your place. And then you've got the really awkward voices, like Gilbert Gottfried, that's like an anti-aphrodisiac. Just when he hits that, that pitch, your vagina dries up and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, because if I were to walk up to you and you're like, Hi there, how you doing? Do you recognize me? <laughs> what a surprise! I think I'm going to have a heart attack and die from that surprise. <laughs> maybe, maybe if I serenade you, will that help? Do that to me one more time! Like, how are you going? Come back! <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for that guy. I'm just grateful I don't have that voice. Can you imagine having that voice at all times? Because that really limits your, op your employment opportunities right there. Slightly seedy, kind of like this place. Slightly seedy, kind of like <laughs> And the only reason I'm still alive is because I managed to somehow find a sense of humor. And because what's better than being the guy that everyone is afraid of is being the guy that everyone likes. Because if they're afraid of you, all it takes is one guy to find out you're not as tough as you seem. But if you're a guy everyone likes, anyone who tries to oppose you, there's going to be three dozen people jumping to say, hey, leave him alone. He does an awesome Gilbert Gottfried impression. <laughs> Just kidding, it's more, they usually defend, leap to my defense because of my Christopher Walken impression. Uh, you guys know what Christopher Walken is? <laughs> my people, thank you. <laughs> Let me just start off by saying, I love being able to do impressions, things like that, and I started when I was really young just watching Sesame Street. You know, because I'd, I'd always hear, and you're like, why are there so many songs about rainbows? <laughs> I don't care how badass you are. There could be a bikers and chain whiskers, and he was sitting there and like, Kermit. <laughs> We don't even know his name. We don't care. He's been interrupting us all night. Uh, no, just doing impressions. And so there was like, hey, hey, do. And they, they always want to see celebrities in weird situations, things like that. It's like, hey, 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 do, do Arnold Schwarzenegger, but like as a stand up comedian. Hello there, my fellow Californians. Two Jews walked into a bar. So I killed them. Ha! That's just, you know, you can do that in any dialect and it'll be funny. <laughs> but at least with Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know he's got a sense of humor. He did kindergarten cop, you know, he had twins, junior, you know he's got a sense of humor. Christopher Walken, on the other hand, he steps up with the microphone. Two Joes walked <laughs> into a bar. laugh or phone the police. He might have just confessed to a crime. <laughs> I mean, he was on the boat with Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood. <laughs> it's one person who got that reference. <laughs> Woo! All right. Am I getting obscure enough for you? All right. How about I start talking about Buckfast, which is a Scottish imbibement that we'd enjoy and then beat people yeah! up. And, yeah! One person knows about Buckfast. Thank you. Please don't hurt me after the show. Wouldn't that one lady go? I was sitting back there with the rest of the comedians because, you know, we're the lame table. And I have this lady sitting right next to us and she's like, oh, I fucking hate comedians. Like, seriously, I heard that. I'm like, all right, it's a good thing I'm a magician. Well, this will be great. <laughs> and let's, let's do this. And you guys probably, you guys want to see a magic trick? Yeah! Oh, crap. 
I should have brought the good stuff. I've only got the rubbish on me right now. Here, tell you what we'll do. Um, we'll do. I need. Would you help me out? What's your name? Jessica. Jessica. Can you pick any one of these balloons? Anyone? Else? Not that one. Anyone other? Than, not that one either. Just take this one right here. And we'll keep it. No, just, just you take anyone here. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, what I want you to do me a favor is just uh, examine it, make sure that there's nothing funny about it. Yeah. You find a legitimate balloon. All right. Good. And I'm gonna set this away. For just a brief moment. Ooh, all right. uh, you said Jessica? Everyone, a round of applause for Jessica! You don't have a seat now, you're fine. I just need someone to pick one of these. All right. So now, what we're going to do with the uh, balloon is we are going to. Ha! Ah. Damn you, Richard Simmons. He's always saying stretch before, you know, and it's just. What are we saying? Ah! It's not that funny. Here we go. I'm going to show you a very simple trick that we used to do as wee bairns running about in Scotland.